Hi, how are you? When I was in college this last time, I read several research articles on small fiber neuropathy. And I remember thinking that this finding would be very important in the future. Well, that was 2014, and the research has exploded on this topic. In this video, small fiber neuropathy is what I'd like to talk about today. Small fiber neuropathy is a disorder that only affects the small sensory cutaneous nerves, those in the skin, and causes nerve damage. It is often found in a variety of diseases such as diabetes and autoimmune disorders like Sjogren's syndrome and now fibromyalgia. The symptoms involved in small fiber neuropathy are stabbing pain, burning pain, or sensations like tingling or itchiness. And also it involves muscle weakness. About 40% of patients with fibro meet the criteria for small fiber polyneuropathy. Polyneuropathy is the term used for simultaneous malfunction of many peripheral nerves throughout the body. There are many causes, but a few that might relate to fibromyalgia are an underactive thyroid, which I plan to do a video on, infections, autoimmune disorders, vitamin B deficiency, and heavy metal toxicity. It can be acute or chronic, and this is obviously a neurological disorder. Skin biopsy and corneal confocal microscopy are used to diagnose and may help in future fibromyalgia diagnostic tests. The corneal confocal microscopy is a diagnostic tool to determine if small nerve fiber loss is evident. About 51% of fibromyalgia patients experience corneal nerve loss. Studies have found a serious reduction of nerve fiber density in skin biopsies of individuals with fibromyalgia. In one study, this reduction affected almost 33% of fibro patients. Nerve conduction studies are not able to detect the nerve fibers, which is the way that they would check these things in the past. So skin biopsy is the only way to diagnose this reduction. It's important to get this diagnosed early for clinical management and prevent further reduced nerve fiber loss. In addition, it's important to determine if there is a loss of unmyelinated C and thinly myelinated fibers that mediate pain, heat, and cold sensation. When the myelin sheath is damaged, nerve impulses slow or even stop causing neurological problems. About 50 to 61% of patients with fibro may have undiagnosed small fiber peripheral neuropathy. I know that I was tested for this when my symptoms first began in my feet and legs, but through a pin pricking procedure, which was negative. And that's when my big long journey began of going from doctor to doctor to figure out what was going on. But I didn't have a skin biopsy. And there's one study that I looked at, 40% of those with fibro 
at the calf and thigh demonstrated this loss. Studies have consistently shown that the presence of peripheral large nerve demyelination and autonomic nerve injury is greater than what could be explained by age alone. So just like some fiber patients have lupus or an inflammatory arthritis like rheumatoid, some of us with fibro may also have small fiber neuropathy. And it has been observed in these patients that thinner corneal nerves may also be present. So what does this tell us? Our past experience of feeling like no one believed in us and the controversy surrounding fibro is finally getting separated into a real disorder. In the fibro community, we always knew it, but it's nice to know that we're finally getting the validation that we deserve. Small fiber neuropathy is just another piece of the pie, but it might help explain our hyperalgesia and allodynia. Small fiber neuropathy and fibromyalgia have several symptoms in common, like a person may also experience pain triggered by heat or cold, urinary problems, bowel problems, periodic rapid heartbeat, dry eyes and or mouth, abnormal sweating, and orthostatic intolerance like dizziness from a sharp drop in blood pressure when standing. It's believed that an anti-inflammatory process is the reason for the damaged nerves and may also explain neuroinflammation, which I'll get into in the next video. So I hope this all makes sense. I know it makes me want to get this checked out with my doctor. So I'm gathering all the evidence I have and we'll see what happens. Since small fiber neuropathy usually starts in the feet, and that is where most of the tingling is and the pain I experience in my feet, which can be quite problematic, it would be nice to either confirm or rule it out. I send you gentle hugs and support. Love you. Sight. It can be. Oh. My scrub. And she. And Bob's. Neuroinflammation.